Hey everybody, welcome back into Lemons to Lemonade. My name is Kara and we're a furniture flipping family located deep in the heart of Texas. Today I have an incredible furniture flip for you. I have been after a waterfall dresser for at least six months now, so I was so thrilled when I finally found one listed on Facebook Marketplace for the bargain price of $25. Now this guy was in really bad shape and he needed a lot of fixing up, but I knew for the price point and for this piece of furniture that I just couldn't pass it up. So off we went in the truck to pick it up for our next furniture flip. So let's go out to the garage and see what we've been up to this week. Come on along. Here's our starting point. Waterfall furniture dates back to the 1930s and 1940s, so I was really excited to find a piece that I could finally work on. First things first is we're gonna take off all of the hardware. Next, you want to clean the piece really well. I like to use crud cutter and just mix it according to the bottle directions. You can use any good degreasing product that has TSP in it, in my opinion, to get all the grease and grime off of old pieces. That works best. Now I want to take it all apart so I can take a look at if anything's broken on the inside or if any of the drawers are going to need repair and it looks like they will. And then also I want to go ahead and vacuum the inside also and get all the spider webs out. Some of the drawers had pieces of the veneer that were chipped off, so I'm going to mix up some Bondo and fill in those little missing pieces. Bondo is really easy to work with. You just take out of the can what you think you're going to use, put a little bit of the hardening cream on top, mix it together until it turns a light pink color, and you have a very short window of time that it stays workable for before it'll harden up on you, so you want to make sure you use it right away. But it's a very easy product to mix together. It's very easy to sand and uh, it's great at fixing broken pieces on furniture. very specific idea I'm hoping to achieve on this waterfall dresser and that includes sanding off the top to its original finish. So I'm going to use my surf prep sander so I can sand this down quickly and I've got 180 grit sandpaper on the top. After that I'm going to go up to 220 so it leaves a nice smooth finish. Now that my bondos dry, I'm going to come back in and smooth all of that down so it's smooth to the touch once I paint over the top. And then I also am going to sand the middle of these drawers where that arrow pattern is and hopefully just stain that part so it leaves a really cool detail on the dresser.
I'm just gonna put it back all together now that I've got it sanded. I wanna see if my vision is gonna come to life here with as far as what I've sanded and what I'm hoping to stain versus what I'm hoping to paint on this guy. Uh, the drawers didn't need very much work after all. They really just need some wax on the insides to help them glide and I'm gonna show you how to do this towards the end of the video. But it looks like it's coming together and I'm gonna be able to achieve the look that I want at the end of this. It's finally time to start painting this. I'm going to go over everything with a tack cloth to make sure I've got all that sanding dust off of there before we start. The diamond pattern down the center is what I'm hoping to stain. So I'm gonna cover this up with some painter's tape and some butcher block paper so that I don't hit any of this with our spray gun when we start spraying. I want to stain the top as well, so I'm going to make sure that this top is covered too. I decided to go with the color Derbyshire by Sherwin-Williams Chalk Paint. I'm going to mix that up in my gravity-fed HVLP spray gun. Um, I find with the darker colors, it does well if you put it through the strainer first. This color is a dark forest green, so it is going to require two coats at least on this. So I went ahead and let it dry for a good two hours and then went back and applied my second coat and found that it gave it plenty of coverage. Now for the first reveal. I did this live over on our Instagram channel, which was pretty fun. It was really cool to see all that nice wood grain detail next to this dark green emerald paint color. It's finally time to stain that beautiful arrow pattern. I'm going to go ahead and use some painter's tape on my green paint that I painted up so it doesn't bleed over into that new paint job. I'm going to clean one more time with my tack cloth just to make sure everything is nice and dust free before I come in with my stain. I chose the color Early American from Minwax to stain with. You can use a soft, dust-free cloth. I like to use staining sponges to put my stain on. I find it gives me more control of the product. I'm just going to apply the stain in the way of the wood grain and let it sit for a few minutes before you wipe it back.
I forgot to mention earlier that I did use stainable wood filler on the parts of the veneer that were chipped on the arrow design that I knew that I was going to stain. And you can see after my first coat of stain here that the stainable wood fill actually wasn't very stainable. So I went ahead and bought one of these Minwax stain markers in the color Early American since it matched the stain that I used. I shook it up really good and applied it to the front of the drawer. And as you're going to see, oh, it's just magical how it works. Now it's time to poly. I like to use Verithane polyurethane on all my pieces. It gives everything a nice satin finish at the end. So the trick to the sticky drawers, if you go ahead and take the sticky drawer out and you get a can of Minwax finishing furniture paste, you will go ahead and take a little bit of this on a rag and rub it all along where the drawer and the inside of the piece of furniture touch together. This will help it slide and glide much easier and it will last for a very long time. So you'll do this to all the pieces of your drawer that touch the inside parts of the furniture and then you'll go to the inside parts along the rails and run some of the finishing wax along that as well. Now for the hardware. I really wanted to keep that original 1930s hardware on the piece. So I boiled a cup of distilled white vinegar and a cup of water in a pan and dropped my hardware in and let them boil for about 20 minutes to remove all the dirt and dust and grime that were left on these pieces. I was going for a really beautiful patina finish which I thought was underneath there if I could scrub all of this off and surprisingly it was so I was really happy with the way the hardware turned out. Now that the hardware is done cooking, it's time to put it all together. Before we get to our staging pictures, let's remember what we started with here and what it turned into after. What do you think of that beautiful wood grain detail on the top? So full disclosure on numbers, I originally listed this for $300 on Facebook Marketplace. It sat there for two weeks with lots of watchers but no real buyers. I ended up restaging it for some better light and dropped the price down to $260 and it sold in a few hours. So minus my original investment, we made a profit of $238. It was a bit less than I was hoping for, but at the end of the day, I enjoyed the challenge. I also got to use my brand new branding iron that I got for Mother's Day, which seemed pretty appropriate since this was one of my favorite pieces. Thank you guys so much for watching our videos and be sure to like and subscribe to our content. I love to bring you fresh new pieces each and every week and we'll see you next time on Lemons to Lemonade.